Hello everyone and welcome back to 20 Minutes With. This is an old segment that's been kind of reborn. Since we've gone to uh, live services now, obviously we're not going to be doing 20 minute interviews during live services for a variety of reasons in, in particular because people aren't always uh, willing to have a, such an open conversation when there's 50 people watching them. So what I'm going to do with these segments now is I want to keep going with them. I really like them and we've had some really, really positive feedback about them. I'm going to create a, set, a subcategory or a kind of a subfile on the church's YouTube page where you'll be able to find these. And that gives us a couple of freedoms. First off, it means we can go a little longer and not feel like we're stepping into or overlapping or taking time out of our worship services. But also it means that I can kind of broaden some of the horizon uh, of the people I'm asking and also broaden some of the questions. So it's kind of uh, morphed into a bit of a talk show. I, I always wanted to be Dick Cavett, and if you're old enough to remember who he is, uh, you're on my team. So I'm going to try and interview a variety of people. I think the questions may shift and flow based on the individual, so we won't be asking the same set of questions every time. But uh, the purpose of this is twofold. Uh, one is to simply get to know people. And as we see people on the street or we see them in church, we, we know them, but we don't always know them. And this environment or this format allows us to get to know them a little better, but also uh, to help one another. I think we can learn from one another. So if, if we ask someone, you know, how do you deal with sorrow? And they share a little bit, you might go, oh, I, I never thought of that. So there's a, a, a prescriptive side of this. Scripture says we comfort one another with the same comfort with which we've been comforted. So I hope that through these series of interviews, uh, you will be encouraged, you might be even entertained a little bit, but also that you will be equipped with tools to help you uh, navigate what's happening in your life. So I'm optimistic about what we can accomplish uh, through these things. I'm realistic as well. But I'm optimistic that as we get to know people, we will draw closer to them, but also as we get to know them, that we will come to a deeper understanding of what it means to follow Jesus in the world in which we live. We are navigating um, an interesting season in history, interesting season in our lives, and I think we all could use someone to walk down that road with. I suspect many of us are tired of walking this road alone. And it would be nice to walk the road with someone. So that's part of this. I might uh, change the title to Walking the Road with Dan, and, uh, whatever it works out to. So anyhow, that's the intention, and that's a little bit of a change in the format. So thanks for joining us as we start this new phase with 20 Minutes with Jerry. And I want to thank Jerry for uh, coming in this morning. Now I don't have to pretend it's Sunday morning. I can be honest. It's Friday morning. It's Friday morning. All right, we'll, we'll start with the surgery. We'll start with the basics. Uh, your name? Gerald Brian Smith. Gerald Brian Smith. Anybody you're named after? Nope. Nope, just, just a you. It was a good name. It's solid. I asked my mom and she said, we like Gerald. <laughs> so, but what do you go by? Jerry. Jerry. Is it Jerry with a G or Jerry with a J? Oh, well, it's a J. It's, so why the switch? I have no idea. Just okay. Kindergarten teacher, possibly. I don't know. Nope, that's good. Because my brother did the same thing. Went from Gerald to Jerry, you know. I was curious why you think that way, or why that is. My wife has been upset with me going with a J because she says it doesn't make sense. But we'll call it, what is it, phonetic, when it sounds like it is? Yeah. Or, yeah. I said, well, there's um, Bill and William. They don't start with the same letter. That's right, yeah. yeah. So that's my logic. <laughs> this is a telltale sign of what I'm, about, what I'm in for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> Good. Uh, where were you born? Edmonton, Alberta. Hmm. Grew up in um, Glendale, California. Okay. But really, mm -hmm. how did you get from Saskatoon? I mean, obviously, my, my dad decided he wanted to live in California. Wow, that's big. What did your dad do? He was a salesman at the time. Uh, he sells real estate now. Oh, okay. And he uh, keeps busy. He sells real estate, and um, right now it's tough, so yeah. he's not making a lot of money doing that, but yeah. he's keeping him busy and keeping him young. So. Good. Well, I should bounce back in time, for sure. All right, uh, these are the get to know you questions. Any food that you would just rather not eat? If you went out and said, ah, I'd just rather not have that. No. Just blanket. No, there's nothing I would rather not eat. I'll eat anything. Wow, that's huge. Uh, what's your comfort food? Mm -hmm. We had ribs last night. They were oh. pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no go-to for you? Like you're feeling sad? No, not really. Chili. But those ribs were really good. That's really good. Are you, are you a cook? Uh, Lois and I take turns. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like to cook. 
Um, Lois likes to cook, and it's sort of good. It's a win-win for you. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Food brings uh, great joy. I, I've learned that mm -hmm, over the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Um, I know it's a tough one for you, but because you, you've already t kind of told me ahead of time, not a big music people, but uh, if I give you a time machine and a golden ticket, and you could go see any musician in any location at any point in history. Here's the golden ticket with a time machine attached to it. Again, I told you, we, I've been to one concert. It was the Captain and <laughs> Neil. So, I don't did, know if I should be proud of that or ashamed of it, but... Did you not go to YC ever? No. Oh, okay. No. I thought over the years you might have. I, I went to, um, back at, when I was in high school, we went to some uh, Jesus People concerts, a couple of them. Oh, okay. Down yeah. in uh, the Rose Bowl. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was in the 70s, right? At the mm -hmm. peak of that. Yeah, so... Do you remember? But I don't saw? remember who oh, okay. was there. You know, I was, I've never been a really big music person. All right. I'll listen to anything. Okay. Well, it's like food. you're very, very open. I appreciate that. <laughs> so let's, I'll give you a different time machine. You can vacation at any place in history. You, you could go to Jerusalem in the first century if you wanted a vacation, but you can go to any location to vacation. I'm a very content person. Ah, okay. So I'm happy wherever you set me basically okay but right now i have yeah. a daughter and three grandsons a daughter and her husband uh Hui, but uh and three grandsons that would be a nice place to visit and of course that's out of bounds right now they're in hawaii right yeah so your your motivation for hawaii is is more family than beach that's both okay it's because a win -win. i grew up near the beach so that oh, right. it's okay. it's kind of uh a go-to place. I can go body surfing and uh, oh. playing on the beach with the best of them. You're a man so. of many surprises. That's mm -hmm. impressive. Good, good. Uh, who's your hero? Peter. As in the apostle? Yeah. Why? Because he made mistakes. And he was... I don't know if the word open about it, but the Bible is definitely doesn't try to cover it or hide it. Right. He made a bunch of goofy mistakes the first one of, well the first one that he's known for is where he denies Christ three times that's the biggie and uh, I always imagine the look on his face when he realized the the crow or the, yeah, the chicken the rooster crowing the yeah. third time and he goes oh yeah and then what he does he, he runs and he, he cries and he flees yeah. right? he's, he's gutted completely yeah and yeah. I, I imagine that and then other times that he's he's sort of called to task and I, I think that sounds like me what do you think that did to his character? That um, that admission that that I mean his failures were so public and so dramatic, and his admission in turn was so public. What does that do to your character when you when you fail in such a dramatic way? Well, he said to the guy at the gate, he said, "I don't have anything for you, but such that I have." Yeah. yeah. And basically, he didn't have anything for him. You know, he monetary, but also. He didn't have anything to give him any great advice because I've I've made mistakes. Yeah. But what I do have, I give to you. Stand up and walk. Yeah, that's very good. Because I know what I don't have, and I know what I do have, and this is the one thing I know. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I like that. It created a degree of certainty you probably didn't have before. Yeah. I'm guessing the guy was fairly confident. In fact, he was. He got up and oh. he walked and he yeah. went and told folks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it burned away a lot of the, the dross in his life, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the shallowness. No, that's good, Jerry. All right. Um, which kind of makes us into the, the, the more of the questions that we're already starting to lead into. Good. Um, what do you see as, as, I'll ask personally, and then we'll ask it broader. Uh, first up, what do you see as your personal purpose in life? Have you sat down and said, oh, this is the purpose of my life? There's a story about the man on the beach. And he's on the beach. This always comes back to the beach. Um, and he's walking along and he's throwing starfish back in the water and somebody comes along and says there's thousands the tide had gone out uh, this is a poem or something like that and he's and the guy says there's no way you're going to be able to make a difference with these right. starfish and he says but I'm making a difference to this one uh, yeah yeah and so I can't do Billy Graham I can't do different folks I'm, I'm I haven't been called. Let's put right. it that way. Yeah. I haven't been called to do that. Right. But the starfish I've got in my hand is what I can do. So that's what I try to do. So what do you think you've been called to do? What I'm doing. I don't think. Um, 
teaching, which is what I've retired from, or EMS, which is I'm, what I'm doing now, is what defines me. Hmm. But what I do while I'm teaching or while I'm doing EMS is what I'm called to do. Good. Meaning um, either comforting, uh, teaching, uh, right. and teaching numbers, which I'm not very good at, um, but that's a long story. Um, um, but what I teach the people that I work with in terms of my attitude and my um, the way I see people and right. listen, we talked about that earlier. Yeah, we'll um, hit that again. I like to listen. Um, I think does does more than the physical things that I that right. I do, and they're important in both cases, Absolutely. obviously. Yeah. And I'm not diminishing them or trying to take away from them. I, they're my vehicles for doing what I do. Right, right. And I also hopefully do good in both, have done yeah. good in both of those situations. Yeah, for sure. Well, earlier on you'd asked me, you know, I, I mentioned that I don't ask people their vocation and why don't I do that? And you hit it on the head too, because very often we define ourselves by our vocation mm -hmm. rather than defining ourselves by the deeper. And the intention of this is, is to, not to diminish, I'll just take your words, you know, to diminish those vocational aspects because they are good things and we do good through them, but more to scratch out of the surface a bit and say, so what does define a person and mm -hmm. what gives them, which is, you know, the lead into my next question, um, what gives life meaning? So I'll ask you that once. What gives your life meaning? Well, my walk with, with Christ, obviously. Yeah. And such a simple answer and so no but it's right yeah. it's almost trite and, and you know is it honest is it this sort of like the peter, yeah. is that a peter answer yeah yeah you know peter would have said the same thing in fact he did he said sure. i'll follow you anywhere i'll die with you i'll hang on the cross yeah and 20 minutes later he was denying him almost yeah when push comes he was to he show. was in a crowd and he was looking over this somebody's shoulder and yeah and hoping I, he wasn't seen i never knew the man yeah, yeah. Is there a difference between purpose and meaning? Purpose and meaning. I don't know. I'll let that one sit for a while. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. for sure. Uh, one of the things you said earlier about your character is you you like to listen, or you're a good listener. Mm -hmm. um, so who are you listening to these days? If I said, you know, let's go have a good listen, who would you say? Yeah, I want to listen to that person for a while. Well, my daily devotional, like this, uh, I can't remember his last name, and I, I should have looked it up before I started. Um, he's on my daily devotional on the Bible that I listen to, and he gives a little sermon before, and I, I listen to him every morning, and I go, wow. Yeah, yeah, good. I'm very, very intelligent, very spiritual man, and very down to earth okay. in his stories. So I listen to him, or, or read. Yeah, listening, reading is listening. Yeah. yeah. Um, First name is Nikki, and he's from England. Gumble. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's his name. Yep. Yeah. And yep. his wife Pippa. Yeah. They're the people that did Alpha. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I want to. I want to meet this man. Yeah, this, yeah. This. If you want to ask me who I'd like to meet, I'd yeah. like to meet him. Nikki I think, Gumble. I think we could have a uh, a really good conversation. Yeah. yeah. Nikki Gumble. That's, that's actually a really good question. If you could meet anybody, who would you meet? Yeah. And just based on listening to his voice and reading his words uh, for the past. Almost six, well, six months, I guess, Yeah, because it was his study. Um, I'd like to have a visit with him. I think we could have a good conversation. Good. Who has shaped your, your thoughts? Who have you listened to over the years? That's been, you know, that's the person I listened to that changed, you know, my soul, my mind, my heart. A lot of people and a lot of small things. Mm. I, I gave some thought about that. Um, I, I, I tend to make connections in life mm -hmm. and um, one of my students, her name was Monica, and she sort of shaped my life. Mm, that's it. Tell me that. And it wasn't in, in it, it's not in the expected way. She was about 10 or 11 years old, my first year or two of teaching. Uh, she was, uh, I want to see, but be, be politically correct. I taught at a school for the, the mentally handicapped. Right. She was nonverbal. And she was um, learning, challenged, trying to be. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, um, brilliant girl though. Mm. She could take me apart in seconds. 
Interesting. She would get my goat and she would be upset and she would um, just have me spinning circles around. You know, she would, I would ask her to go sit in the chair and she would do things that were just, and I just, she, she challenged me at every step. Yeah, no kidding. So I taught there for three years and she had me twisted around her finger and we moved to mm. Prince Albert. And I thought, Monica's in my past. Gotcha. First day of school, I meet Jennifer. <laughs> Same kind of school. Oh, interesting. And she, it was like she'd been taking lessons from Monica <laughs> and improved upon it. Monica 2.0 kind of thing. So in my life, has, I've always said, and if you've ever asked me a question about that, Monica, there's always a Monica in my life. Interesting. Hey. And yeah. so um, I wait for her. And she comes, she's either a colleague or she's a boss or she's a whatever. Yeah. And uh, the way I've dealt with her has gotten better over the years. Yeah. Well, that's good. That shows you and can so learn she's, as well. She's guided my life. There'll always be a Monica. That's fascinating. It's yeah. not Churchill. I, I noticed. You yeah, we've got a little yeah. Churchill here. because um, we, and, yeah. and that too. But um, Monica's sort of kept me grounded. Interesting. Monica will get me. That one's worth pondering, you know, who's the Monica in our life that maybe pushes us and makes it... And if your name is Monica, I don't mean to... Yeah, yeah, no, but no. I'll never name yeah. a child Monica. No, no. <laughs> or uh, Jennifer. I, I have no Neils in my life. I'm just There's a whole long story behind the Neil. I'll yeah, never, yeah. never made a kid. And I, when I meet someone named Neil, I always have to backpedal and push away all the history. Okay, you're a fresh right. Neil, but yeah, you're yeah. still a Neil. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so she's been my guide. Interesting. And she'd never understand that she was. Or right, is. right. But yeah. she'd also be like 55 or 60 now. 55 anyways. Time gets away on us, yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, what brings you joy? I don't know. Just being around people and, and being a help when I can. Good. Good. Find satisfaction in that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, of course, there's my Peter coming out again. Mm -hmm. um, I take pleasure in reading the Bible and, mm -hmm. and um, pondering on it, mm -hmm. and I like to run. Yeah, I often see you out with. Um, I like to walk my dog. Jake, Jake, and I are, are buds. Good, good. Um, those kinds of things. Good. Be with Lois, obviously. Yeah, and I, I don't want to diminish the the cores of our lives, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. But I'm I'm a content person that way. Yeah. What I'm doing is what's making me happy most of the time. Hmm. You've, that's the second time you've alluded, or not alluded, you said directly that you're a content person. Define that for me, and then we'll ask you why that's possible. What do you mean when you say you're... I, th I think we know what we mean when someone says content, but what does that mean to you when you say you're a content person? Um, I don't get excited about things. I don't... Um, I'm just a very straight, yeah. you know, I can't think of any really highs and lows that would take me off track, except if somebody asked me to step up, I might deny it three times and, <laughs> and then and then realize it, hopefully. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I mean, you're in a profession that requires a calm personality. We certainly want... Right, and uh, confidence. You need a certain amount of confidence. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. a prayerful life is, is also good, you know, and we're yeah. heading out to do something or... In the teaching thing, you, you know, when Monica steps up, you maybe yeah. stop and say, okay, Lord, just help me figure this out quick. Yeah. Or yeah. I don't know if I always even do that. I think it sometimes beforehand, I think, oh, if I get a call, I'm going to pray about this before I get there. But I know in the background that prayer isn't actually saying the words. It's right. the way you live your life. Prayers, you can be prayerful. Yes. Daily and continually. I just read about that from I think Nikki Campbell yeah. and um, uh, it's 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 an attitude in life that that makes you prayerful too yeah, it's a groundedness right yeah yeah that passage where Paul says pray without ceasing it's actually in the language it's without ceasing pray he's not saying don't stop praying he says never always endure in your prayer without without ceasing don't don't, don't give up and that sense of that our life is this enduring yeah. prayer yeah. not necessarily this click on the watch kind of prayer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ten, oh, I don't yeah. know if I'm going to make 10 minutes. Exactly. And then my mind wanders and thinks about <laughs> what I'm having for supper tonight. Yeah. 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 A life of groundedness in, well, and it goes back to a life of groundedness in God. We, we are grounded 
we, in him we live and move and have our being. Yeah. Which is a great phrase. Yeah. Good. Um, where do you find peace? Your job is stressful. You deal with trauma. Uh, where does Jerry go when he, when he needs to find a place of peace? I go for a run. Go for a run. If I've had a really tough call, yeah. the run is a little bit faster, a little bit harder. Yeah, yeah. Kind of work out some of the... Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's, and, that's, and that's prayerful. You know, I'll start yeah. praying. Absolutely. I've uh, stopped and looked up and, you know, said, what's that all about? Yeah. yeah. Every once in a while, I've had to do that. I've lost sleep. I've lost... Oh, I'm sure. You know, in all kinds of different situations. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it gets in us and it's going to work its way out of us, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, yeah. I understand stress. Yes. Yeah, and trauma, of course, mm-hmm. would be, be a part of your regular experience. Yeah, and understand. So, uh, which leads me to my next question: How do you manage the pain? Life, we know that. Life, you know, uh, what the Princess Bride say? You know, uh, life is pain, Your Highness. That anyone who tells you otherwise is trying to sell you something. That uh, how do you manage the pain? Tears. Yeah. Walking, running. Family. Good. Not in that order. No. No. Um, uh, Peter, Monica, yeah. Churchill, yeah. different things like that. Things that sort of, you know, can get me through a different thing. Yeah. Um, Lois is a really good listener. Mm. And she's a really, you know, she's, uh, she's always there for me. And if, and if she's, you know, she'll, she'll call me to task when I'm uh, maybe not doing my listening job as well as I, I would like, think I can do. Yeah, that's fair. But um, if I'm going through a hard time, she is so supportive. Mm, good. And she she will either bring me back to ground or she'll uh, lift me up if I'm having a tough time. She's good. She doesn't know how good she is. Uh, she really doesn't. That's the best. She's it. really good, though. And you celebrated a significant anniversary? 43 years. Wow. As of yesterday. Yeah, yeah that's... Congratulations to Lois, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'm going to skip this one. I got a couple more that I want to want to bounce into. Um, what does it mean to live a good life? Somebody said to you, "What's the good life, Jerry?" I looked this up on the internet today. The good life, I have thousands and thousands of hits. So, if somebody said to you, "What's the good life, Jerry?" Define a good life. Stay true to what you believe, hmm. and try to believe the right things. Yeah, which is a Christian background. Um, yeah, absolutely. And if you were to look back at the end of your days and said, you know, I've lived a good life. And I recognize Jesus says, no, why do you call me good? No man is good but God. And we recognize what we're playing with a word a bit. But to look back and say, you know, that was a good life. What was it? Yeah. What did, what did it contain? I'm not asking you to write your own obituary. Well, I mentioned the sign on, in my office. In 20 years, what do you wish you'd done today? Yeah. Do it now. Yeah. Um... Do the best you can with what you've got. Um, I wasn't the best teacher. I'm not the best at anything. If you take me to a a, um, a marathon and and I toe the line, I'm not going to come in first. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I'm going to do my level best to get to mm-hmm. the end. Mm-hmm. And I'm. That's the way my life is. You know, mm. I'm going to do the best I can with what I've got. I'm good. I've got some brilliant daughters and some a brilliant wife, and they picked me. <laughs> <laughs> Made a good choice. They, they must have been smart enough to that's right. stick around with me. Yeah, when somebody really so, smart picks you, go, well, wow, it must be pretty good. I guess yeah. just do my best with what I've got. Yeah, um, I like that. Yeah. I think that's, and at the end, hopefully somebody will say, well done. Yeah, that's the key. Well done, though, good and faithful servant. Mm-hmm. That's, I... I ache to hear that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that's that goes through my mind, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Did I do it right today? Yeah. And yeah. You'll, the day. you'll go. Ah, you know, I said that. I did say that. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. My partner, um, Kit Brame, he, uh, we, we sort of joke back and forth, and we talk politics every once in a while. And I said, "Can I say that on on Facebook?" <laughs> and he said, uh, "What would Lois say?" And she said, "And I'd say no." And he says, "No." <laughs> Well, the old axiom is, yeah. when in doubt, don't. And right. Yeah, and yeah. so I look at him and he goes. Yeah. yeah. You're, <laughs> so you're, you're not he gonna, knows me. Yeah. You're not going to regret not saying it. You might regret saying it. Yeah, I, I hear you. 
It's hard once the uh, once the barn door is open, the horse is gone to, to close the barn. Yeah. yeah, I always say I wear peppermint shoes. That way, when I stick my foot in my mouth, it tastes better. Um, but uh, good. you know, it makes me cry. Mm, I haven't asked. That's a good question. It's a good one. Yeah. Um, and like, I don't cry from pain. First off, I don't like physical pain. No, I, yeah. I, I won't. Um, you know, you might tear up from you know. I can't think of anything. It would be. Yeah, like I can say, yeah. but anyways, human response. But um, to hear that I've influenced somebody mm -hmm. and had a positive impact, and yeah. Kit um, Shane uh, told me the other day, I when he was two years old, he was in my ambulance. Oh and wow! He'll hate me telling the story. Um, and um, I give him. We, we used to pass out, or still do, pass out little stuffies to little kids. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And one day we were at the at the nursing desk, and he says, "You know, I've still got that stuffy." Ah. And I went, "Oh, that's kind of cool." And he described it, and I sort of vaguely remembered it, and um, not more than vaguely, I remembered it. Right. He, he said, "You can put your hand in." It was a puppet. I went, "Oh yeah, I remember that one." And that's he's thirty one or something yeah. years ago, so that's twenty eight years ago. Hmm. And I remembered that incident, and I remembered him in the car and stuff like that, and his problem. And. Uh, so I said to him, I said, so why'd you go into EMS? Huh. And he told me, and I started crying. Aww. And he told me, he says, well, and I went, oh. And I thought, how many other people have I influenced? And I said, yeah. I guess that's why I do what I was. Yeah. So that goes back to the beginning too, is yeah. if I can have an influence, and that's, that's yeah. just a small thing. Well, yeah. I mean, it's more than a small thing. He's no, made a career out of it, but it's, yeah. um, if I can have had a, had a positive impact on somebody, yeah, that's what I'm after. Yeah. I think one of the benefits of age is you realize he lived, by the way. It, yes. and that was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the fact that yeah, uh, years <laughs> later he still says thank you or, or to, yeah. to that effect, and I went because we don't realize we think we're giving out copper pennies. Turns out years later they're gold coins. You know, we mm -hmm. thought it was just this little gesture, this small coin that we and we realized no there was something of great value in that in that moment and I, I think that's part of the benefits of age we look back and we get to see what was gold mm -hmm. and what really was meaningless and as we meet people from our past and they you know or you evaluate like your your Melanie was that her name no Melissa Monica Monica you know that Monica was a gold coin and yeah at the moment I'm sure she didn't feel like it but she uh, never knew yeah yeah that she was that golden person in your life yeah all right, one last question for you. I know you need to go walk your dog yet this morning. How do we balance the reality of human suffering, what we see all around us, and what you are exposed to on a regular basis with your vocation in life, with the goodness of God? We as Christians say, you know, we sing. You know, he's a good, good father. God is good, you know. And yet we look around the world and we see the suffering of the world. How do you work that through in your own mind? How does that fit into your faith? I was just reading that last night, or listening oh, to it last night. I uh, asked the right question. Then. David, uh, I can't remember his son's name that tried to kill him. Oh, Absalom. Absalom. That's the Sunday sermon, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we planned this. Before. Perfect timing. <laughs> he, uh, Absalom was not his best son, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he stole the throne. He tried to kill his father. And, yeah, there's some issues and there. Then, and, and he also he, killed his other son. And yeah. he still loved him. He's, he, yeah. didn't, he didn't want him to die. Yeah. He was kind of ticked when the, when it did happen. When he died, he grieved yeah, for seven and days. And so... Um, and all of Jerusalem grieved with him. Say the question again. I just... How do you... Okay, there are two seemingly contradictory forces in our lives or, or expressions. One is we, as, as those who follow Jesus, say God is good. We sing the songs, God is good, good father. But we look into the world... And we see injustice and suffering and okay. how do you how do you reconcile in your own mind those two seemingly contradictory realities? Well, so that's where I was going. Yeah. Um, um, he was thankful even afterwards. Mm. After his son tried to kill him, he was he was David was always always came back to God. Right. He always had a well I shouldn't say he always had. There was some times when he messed up too. Him and oh. Peter. Oh, yeah, David, David messes up big time. D David and yeah, Peter yeah. Are, are two of a kind. Yeah. Like we all are. That's right. Yeah, we yeah. are all David and Peter. That's right, yeah. But um, uh, 
I guess that's that's where I fall. Like bad things are going to happen. Yeah. And if you can just keep coming back to God, um, you'll get through it. Yeah. Um, this COVID thing, we are going to get to the other side. There's going to be another side. It's not going to be the way it was. No, no. And our situation after a dog dies, which yeah, I understand we're, you lost your yeah, dog. Yeah, we're going through um, that too. You go through it and yeah. the, the, the trick is to keep going. Yeah. When the, when the fire is in front of you, I've always said that the only way to get through the fire is to walk through the fire. Yeah. There's no if ring. You stop and, if you stop and say, this is too hot. It's not going to get better. Exactly. Yeah. There's no ring road around the Valley of Shadows. Psalm 23, right? Mm -hmm. the, the valley, the road through the valley is through the valley. That's David talking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you have to cross the valley to yeah. get to the other mountain on the other side. Yeah. You may smell like smoke and be a bit singed by the time you get through. Yeah. 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 I, I, I don't think the, the, the existence of suffering and the existence of the goodness of God destroys or defeats the very nature of God. People have said that, right? How can a good God exist when there's so much evil in the world? And we're asking that. Really, that's the philosophical yeah. question. But Mickey, just you... Mickey Gumbel, just one of the things I just read too, he said that uh, God can make good things out of your, your mistakes. Absolutely. You make a mistake. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Peter made a mistake. He made it into the Bible with that yeah, one. Yeah, that's big time. Yeah. Um, the I Master Smith, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Jerry. And uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, I will be pursuing some of you. I think there's some good people I want to... And I know it's it's a little intimidating at first. We've been through this road. It is. It is. I know it's just terrifying. But <laughs> how, how, how was it, Jerry? Good? It was good. Good. Yeah. I stopped good. shaking. Yeah, yeah. And you don't even notice that little R2 unit's there. Yeah. So good. So I'll be... Uh, uh, Chasing some of you. In the meantime, I hope you do benefit and see both Jerry's heart and then pick up maybe some of the, the skills that God has taught him uh, in his life that you can apply in your own life. So thanks for watching. We will see you next time on 20 Minutes with... Good girl, Trixie.